Our weekly immigration news roundup is brought to you by the law firm of Figueroa and Associates. For a consultation on any immigration or legal matter, please call 855-768-8845. That's 855-768-8845. For full stories and more immigration news, visit www.theimmigrantsjournal.com. That's www.theimmigrantsjournal.com. Hello, my name is Mary Campbell, legal assistant at the law firm of FIG, Aro and Associates, and a presenter with this week's immigration news. We begin with House passes bill strengthening ability to block immigrants for DUIs. The House passed a bill Thursday, February 1, strengthening laws to prevent non citizens convicted of driving under the influence from immigrating to the country or to deport them. The bill passed with a 274 to 150 vote, with 59 Democrats joining all 215 Republicans in backing the legislation. DUIs are already grounds for deportation in some cases, and it's well understood by those seeking to gain residency that such a conviction can hinder the process of adjusting their status. 200 immigration-related bills have already been introduced in state legislatures in 2024. Amid an action from the federal government on immigration policy and growing calls for action from localities, some state legislatures are taking a proactive role in welcoming immigrants and refugees. Once again, states are leading the way on immigration policy in the U.S., despite being less than a month into the 2024 state legislative cycle. State legislatures have introduced numerous proposals advancing immigrant-inclusive policies, with the American Immigration Council already tracking over 200 immigration-related bills. The policies are varied, ranging from those aiming to remove barriers to occupational licensure to get more high-skilled immigrants into jobs, to bills establishing offices of new Americans to bolster immigrants' integration and access to essential services and information. Biden administration can remove Texas' razor wire barrier at the border. Supreme Court rules buoy barriers with chainsaw devices in the Rio Grande River. Coils of concertina wire along the riverbank. Armored Humvees blocking access roads. Piles of dirt rendering gates unusable. Governor Greg Abbott's cruel attempts to booby trap the Texas border to prevent U.S. Border Patrol agents from reaching migrants might be considered comical if not for the many human lives put at risk and the threat to the rule of law that result from his wild E. Coyote-inspired antics. Texas' latest violent and lawless tactics have led to the deaths of multiple migrants, as well as an escalating standoff between federal and state authorities that challenges the core principles of how our government is supposed to function. The Supreme Court on Monday, January 29, finally stepped in to mediate one arena of the feud between the federal government and Texas, issuing a temporary ruling in favor of the Biden administration. Meanwhile, in New York, Attorney General James takes action to protect DREAMers and DACA program New York Attorney General Letitia James today co-led a multi-state coalition of 23 attorneys general against Texas' ongoing effort to end the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, DACA, program. In the amicus brief filed before the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit, the coalition urges the court to reverse the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of Texas decision that the DACA program is unauthorized by law. The DACA program has allowed over 800,000 recipients to live, study, and work across the United States free from the fear of being forcibly separated from their families and communities. No American should fear being forced from their home and loved ones because of their immigration status, said Attorney General James. We are a nation built by immigrants, and everyone should have access to the American dream. In New York and states around the country, DACA grantees are our first responders, healthcare workers, teachers, and more, and our communities flourish because of them. Ending this program will tear families apart and remove hardworking Americans from their homes. I am proud to lead my fellow attorneys general in this tireless effort to keep our residents safe. 
Busco says NYC's $708 million suit over migrants is federal issue. A charter transportation company pressed a federal court to hear New York City's lawsuit, seeking to hold bus companies financially responsible for migrants' buzz to the city, arguing the lawsuit threatened the migrants' federal rights to travel between the states. New York advocates and researchers highlight new data on positive economic impact of new NYC immigrants. On February 1, advocates highlighted newly released data by the Immigration Research Initiative on the economic prospects of new arrivals and their positive contributions to New York City's economy. Researchers from the Immigration Research Initiative will explain their findings, which estimate $23 million in total wages and $2.6 million in state and local tax revenue is generated per 1,000 migrant workers within their first year. Advocates pointed to these numbers as proof that immigrant New Yorkers uplift our economy. State and city leaders must invest in legal services to ensure new arrivals can find pathways to work. The challenges associated with newly arriving immigrants are real, but they are largely temporary, said Anthony Capote. Immigration Research Initiative. Our research shows what so many researchers and advocates already know. Immigrants are resilient and capable of tremendous economic mobility. The longer new immigrants spend in the United States, the more their wages and economic contributions grow. In other news, U.S. size issues final rule to adjust certain immigration and naturalization fees. On Tuesday, January 30, USCIS published a final rule to adjust certain immigration and naturalization benefit request fees for the first time since 2016. According to the USCIS, the final rule will allow them to recover their operating costs and support more timely processing of new applications. Unlike many other federal agencies, USCIS are almost entirely fee-funded. Approximately 96% of their funding is from filing fees, and only about 4% is from congressional appropriations. The final rule is the result of a comprehensive fee review, as required by law, and follows the January 2023 publication of a Notice of Proposed Rulemaking. The review concluded that the current fee schedule falls far short in recovering the full cost of agency operations including the necessary expansion of humanitarian programs, federally mandated pay raises, additional staffing requirements, and other essential investments. Finally, NYGov Kathy Huckle suggests deporting mob of migrants who pounded cops in caught-on-camera attack near Times Square. Republican polls are lining up to demand that the rowdy migrants nabbed in a caught-on-camera attack on two NYPD cops in Times Square get deported. And Gov Kathy Huckle said it's something that should certainly be looked at. The Democratic governor, speaking to reporters after announcing the nomination of Stephen G. James as New York State Police. Superintendent Wednesday, January 31, was asked about the shocking beatdown and whether the asylum-seeking suspects should be deported. I think that's actually something that should be looked at, Huckle replied. I mean, if someone commits a crime against a police officer in the state of New York and they're not here legally, it's definitely worth checking into, she said. Thank you. Our weekly immigration news roundup is brought to you by the law firm of Figueroa and Associates. For a consultation on any immigration or legal matter, please call 855 855- 768-8845. That's 855-768-8845. For full stories and more immigration news, visit www.theimmigrantsjournal.com. That's www.theimmigrantsjournal.com.